Hello, welcome to Smarter in Science. Let's take just a few minutes to consider our sun and look at this picture here and you can see that our sun is enormous compared to the tiny earth drawn to scale next to it. And our sun is shining 24 hours a day and it's 109 times the diameter of earth. And what that means is that you could actually fit 1.3 million earths inside of our sun. That's how huge it is. Our sun's currently 4.6 billion years old and we think it'll shine for another 5 billion years. So the punchline is our sun should shine for 10 billion years at this incredible amount of energy that our sun releases. Now what if I told you that Recently, we've discovered objects in deep space that release so much energy, they release more energy than our sun does over its entire 10 billion year life. But these things that we've discovered in space release that much energy over just a few seconds. These things are called gamma ray bursts. They're real, and when we discovered them, we couldn't believe our eyes because they were generating so much incredible energy coming from deep space. Now I want to take a second to let that sink in. Here's little bitty Earth next to the giant sun right around the corner. And we've discovered these things in deep space that emit gamma rays with more energy. And these things happen in just a few seconds that we see in deep space. They emit more energy than our sun does over its entire 10 billion year lifespan. So the question is, how do we discover these things? Basically, in 1967, the U.S. military put some satellites in space, and they were actually looking for the Soviet Union uh, testing nuclear weapons in violation of the Test Ban Treaty, because nuclear weapons regenerate a lot of gamma rays also. What they found instead is they detected these enormous bursts of energy coming from deep space that we now call gamma ray bursts. When you might say, what are gamma rays anyway? Well, this is what we call the electromagnetic spectrum, and that's a big word. All it means is here is the rainbow that we can see visible light, and if you go this direction, you start getting into higher and higher energy. You have ultraviolet, which you worry about for sunburns, x-rays, of course, and at the far end, we have gamma rays. They're really, really high energy waves, and of course, gamma radiation is what turned David Banner into the Incredible Hulk. So after we discovered the first couple of gamma ray bursts, we started building dedicated satellites to hunt for them. And here's a, a kind of an illustration of one of them. And what we found is that these gamma ray bursts, one of them are happening on average every single night that we're detecting, which is kind of amazing to think about. One of these things is happening every night. But the interesting thing is that all of these gamma ray bursts are happening in distant galaxies. And when I say distant, I mean three, four billion light years away. None of them are happening in our own Milky Way galaxy, at least that we've observed. They're all happening really far away. Now here are a couple of pictures that I want you to take a second to kind of like really think about. Notice that these pulses all have different shapes. Some of them are narrow, some of them are broad, some of them are kind of have more of a flat top. But look at the time scale. This is a 60 second time scale, five second time scale, 40 second time scale. I want you to think about what's happening. We've detected this guy dumping more energy out over just a few seconds, this peak here, than our sun delivers during its entire 10 billion year life coming out of this pulse. And that's just amazing because everything in space always happens over millions of years except for these gamma ray bursts that are happening in just a few seconds. So what have we learned? How do these things form and what do they look like, right? Well, obviously we can't take a picture of one, like a photograph, but here's an illustration. What we've figured out so far is that these gamma ray bursts are occurring in a narrow cone. It's almost like a, like a lighthouse happening in deep space, shooting jets off in one specific direction. So we only actually see them on Earth if the jet is headed and pointed straight at us. And after the initial blast of gamma rays, very often we see a tail off of x-rays and even sometimes visible light, and they're all occurring in galaxies billions and billions of light years away. So if Earth is over here and the jet is not actually shining directly on Earth, then we'll absolutely miss it. We're only seeing the ones that are, happen to be pointed in our exact direction. So scientists spent years trying to figure out what could possibly cause this much energy to be released in such a short period of time. And the current theory is that basically during a supernova explosion, which is when some very massive stars in their life, 
the outside of the star explodes, but the core of these high mass stars actually collapse and form what you probably heard about called a black hole. So during this collapsing process, when all of the matter in the inside of the star just smashes into each other, you get these two intense jets of gamma radiation. You can see them flying out in each direction. So right in the center here is where a black hole is being formed. So the radiation goes out and gets compressed and hits the interstellar medium, and then you start getting x-rays and visible light and radio waves. And again, this energy coming out is more energy than our sun uh, it, it, it expresses out in over 10 billion years, and it's all happening in just a few seconds. So the obvious question is, what would happen if a gamma ray burst actually hit the Earth from a pretty close distance? Even within a thousand light years, calculations are showing that it could cause a planet-wide extinction event if one of these things hit us from a relatively small distance. Even a thousand light years is pretty far away. Well, the reason that it does that is because the calculations show that a gamma ray burst would totally disrupt and strip away our ozone layer from our atmosphere almost immediately as soon as it hit us. And what that means is the sun would cook us with ultraviolet radiation that we wouldn't be protected from. Now, we haven't seen any gamma ray bursts uh, coming from our own galaxy from our recent observations, but the question is, have gamma ray bursts ever affected Earth in the past? And the answer is maybe, we're not sure, but when we look at Japanese cedar trees from a long time ago in the, in the history of these rings, we see that these cedar trees have observed 10 to 20 times the amount of carbon-14, which is a heavier form of carbon from the atmosphere, than they should have. So basically they absorbed a really odd amount of carbon-14 from the atmosphere. So something was producing a lot more carbon-14 during AD 774 for a really short period of time, which then immediately stopped after the event was over. Now we're not sure if it was a gamma ray burst. It could have been a solar flare, really, really big solar flare that could do that. Or it could have been a gamma ray burst that hit Earth, generated a ton of additional carbon-14, which the trees then absorbed and now we see today, but then it was over. Obviously it wasn't enough to, to cause an extinction event, but it's possible that one of these things have hit us in the past. Now I'll leave you with one final mind-blowing thought. Imagine one or two of these gamma ray bursts are happening every single night that we can observe. And here's a map of, of the ones that we've detected. Here's the galactic plane where we live. Notice these gamma ray bursts are happening pretty much in every direction we look with pretty equal frequency. If we look here, if we look here, if we look down here, or over there, we see gamma ray bursts everywhere, right? One or two of them a night. But the thing that'll blow your mind is that we're only able to see the ones that are shining directly like a lighthouse directly at Earth. If we're off to the side, then we're totally not going to see the vast majority of these gamma ray bursts that are actually happening. So this map, if we could actually plot all of the gamma ray bursts, even the ones we can't see, would be filled everywhere. Black holes are being formed all over the sky every single night. And to me, I find that fascinating because every one of those pinpoints is like our sun dumping all of its energy in just a few seconds.